When you're out on the water, every morning is different. Every day, different. That's what keeps pulling us back again and again. Promise of something new, something exciting. The promise of memories we'll keep forever. Fishing is a simple pleasure, really. One that makes us feel connected, makes us feel alive. And when your line tightens and your rod bends, it doesn't matter if you're a six-year-old or a tournament pro. That buzz of excitement hits us all the same way. It's the moment we live for. Give me some More than 50 years ago, we wanted to change the way people fish. Moving off the shoreline to where we knew the fish were larger and much more fun to catch on light tackle. So we gave fishermen the ability to see individual fish under the boat. Ever since the little green box, Lawrence has been driven to bring innovative products that provide real benefits to anglers. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Fish Tech Live. This is season three, episode two. Um, I don't know if we're going to have a full hour this evening, but um, I've got a couple of things that I'd like to show you, so I'm not going to waste time if we don't need to, to try and drag it out to an, an hour. Guys, three big things happening at the moment. <clears throat> well, predominantly two big things happening, and then just a little bit of uh, product information but uh, the first and biggest things thing by far guys is the world fishing games being held in South Africa right now there are many disciplines I spoke about it last month in my fish tech live you won't see it on the major media you won't see it on your, you won't hear about it on your radio you won't see it on your TV it's dead quiet nobody knows about this event you would swear it's a little club having a party but guys, it's a major, major event. <clears throat> uh, let me just see if there's any problems. No, there, there, there's no problems. Um, so, so guys, first off the bat, the most important thing is, like I said, this um, world champs. Let's talk about that. The second thing, sorry, sorry, I forgot about the menu. Second thing that we're talking about, we can have a little bit of a, um, <clears throat> a little bit of a clash between the two latest technologies you've got your active imaging versus your hummingbird your hummingbird mega plus and we're going to put that against one another and uh we're going to see how well you guys can see what sort of results we we get on the water without fiddling without fiddling with settings out the box one or two things powered up good to go so that's what we're going to do and then the third thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the little remote control that has come out from Lawrence. Um, I must admit at first I wasn't too keen on this product. I didn't really see the point. I used it on the weekend. Guess what? I cannot live without it. Boom. Just like that. I can't believe it. Fantastic little product. But we're going to go through the setup and all that type of thing. So guys, here we go. Let's have a look at what is going on here. <clears throat> now I don't know if this is going to, I'm going to pause this here. Uh, let's go back one. Uh, now there's two of me. That's always scary. <clears throat> the, hummingbirds the hummingbird guys particularly get quite scared when they see that. Um, guys, um, let me go back another one here. South Africa. This is our South African team. There are a number of guys of uh, teams around the world. Uh, I've got, I'm, I'm just going to call it off, off the top of my head here. Well, no, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to bring it up. Let me see if I can try and scroll on this computer so I can see some of the countries. Guys, I'm just going to rattle through some of the countries. This is the black bass um, uh, on the Vol River at the moment. It's South Africa, Australia, Croatia, Italy, Swaziland, Germany, Zambia, Namibia, Mexico, United States is here. Uh, South Korea is, is here. Portugal, Zimbabwe, Spain. Yeah, guys, so it's a fantastic turnout. Um, these are the guys... 
that are representing the, their countries. As you can see, for South Africa, we've got Justy Farkafissa, Daryl Quinton, Craig Fraser, Martin de Kock, Ruan Vol, and Charlton Hewitt. So, guys, these guys are, f are, are flying our local flag, which is fantastic. So, um, I'm going to let's just break the ice with today quickly. Today was day one. Uh, Sunday, the Saturday was the opening ceremony in Johannesburg. Apparently, it was a phenomenal success. I wish I could have been there. Unfortunately, I'm tied up with my real business. I can't get away. Um, and uh, Sunday was first day of practice. M uh, Monday was second day of practice. Today, Tuesday, was the first day of actual fishing. And um, without any sort of real surprise, South Africa is. Let me just confirm if it's still like that. I'm on waymasters.net. Yes, they are still in, in the lead. So well done. We got Australia lying second, Croatia third, Italy fourth, then Swaziland, Germany. So yeah, guys are doing well. But the team, let me see if I can bring this up. I don't know if you guys can see this. I'm going to pop that in there. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Yeah, you can see it. Um, look at that. That's where we lie on day one day one of actual fishing there's your results you can go to waste waymasters.net and go and have a look at that uh, if we go down here there is some um, awesome awesome news right at the top the winning team for day one is daryl quinton and martin de Kock. martin de Kock is one of my fish tech pro staff guys daryl quinton is a lauren south africa my biggest competition um, a pro staff so and you can see uh, let me put that picture back on so you can see how beautiful that looks there look at those two lovely big uh, um, live units hang on how do I change that now quickly you see this this program I don't know I've never been able to stop it no that's not what we're looking for Jeez, guys I've lost let me see if I can find that sorry pause hey you got to love live shows eh? and this part of this little program that i use to create this loves doing that you lose control those images just go you you, you can't unless there's something missing but uh yeah there we go you got two lovely uh, 12 inch units there maybe we will see daryl quinton upgrade to some nice 16s at some point which will be nice but uh, these two guys here, these were today's um, leaders on, on the scoreboard. So well done, guys, and well done to the whole team. In fact, well done to everybody. It's tough on that smelly old river. It's tough, tough fishing. The guys are bringing little fish like this. Mm. But anyway, what can one do? It is what it is. Maybe we'll look at a different venue someday. But uh, yeah and what else okay so 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 that's the 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 world championships okay uh this was um the video feed uh mark bywater and his team of um production professionals LibreVision, uh give us uh, this lovely 380 pixel um uh, live feed in the afternoons i know it's a little bit hard to see such low resolution but it is live at least it's something you know <clears throat> I know they, they send a little rover to Mars and that sends images back at approximately the same resolution. But maybe that can be tweaked in the future. But at least it's nothing. There's something there, which is fantastic. Um, and there we go. There's Daryl and Martin with their fish. So that was a really, really great thing for that. And let's just keep an eye on it. They still got two days on the water. They got Wednesday and Thursday is the final day. So let's see what goes on there. Next, uh, this was the Joey's tournament. Joey's tournament kicked off on Inanda Dam. This is basically, I'm just doing a little bit of news now while we're dealing with the championships. Um, Alistair, these are new users. He's a new user to my charts. I spent a couple of hours with him and his partner, his fishing partner, Ricky, on the water using the charts. We put the 16 up on the front and they got to see what it looks like with a 16. Um, they said, and they, and they are, like I said, new users to the fish check charts. And they said, hop onto my boat and set my charts up for me, please. I said, no problem. I hopped onto their boat and they had a little five inch unit. Well, it didn't take long 
before Alistair has upgraded to a beautiful Elite TI, TI2 9-inch with a 0.1. So these guys now are styling. And the proof is in the pudding. First time users with the charts, guess what? Boom, they win the Joey's tournament on Inanda Dam under very tough conditions. So well done, guys. They've also got some videos coming out. So please watch these guys. You can look for them on Facebook. Alistair Moore's Pit and Ricky Main. They've got a fishing, Thornfeld fishing page. Go and have a look for that. Uh, I can put up a link uh, on my Facebook page a little bit later. But you'll see earlier in the week I did uh, push their, their videos. These guys, young guys, doing some great stuff. Lovely fishing. Then uh, this was FLW. Uh, FLW went to Albert Falls. It was their February event, I think it was. Or was it January? January, February. Anyway, I'm open to correction. Uh, we just spoke about Martin de Kock, who's on the river at the moment, representing South Africa in his Pratia colors. This is him at FLW taking second place with some monster fish there. So again, he's holding that fish tech flag high, 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 which is really fantastic. And Martin best of luck to you and and your team up there and michael cannon by now i'm sure a lot of you guys know michael cannon and he's become a, a regular here on the fish tech live show as you know he's also one of the fish tech pro staff and these guys and dogs i mean look at that there he's standing next to his dad roy roy has actually won the albert falls classic tournament slash classic uh, back in the day, not with a little fish on, under tough conditions. No, a monster of a fish, well over five kilograms. So these guys are no strangers to big fish, as they like to call it, dogs. Or dogs, dogs, dogs. Well, yeah, there's lots of dogs. Yeah. But that is not their biggest fish. Look what Roy caught. Boom. Look at the size of that monster. That was on the same day. I think that's how they opened the account for the day. Put the fear of, yeah, into the other guy's shame. And Jesus, your heart must break when you see a fish like that coming out the water. You just want to trailer the boat and go home. But you guys, well done. Absolutely fantastic. Roy Cannon, great fish. Really, really a great fish. And then on the international scene, uh, Major League Fishing, of course, um, Jordan Lee, he took that. So fantastic. Well done there. And this morning when I opened Facebook, I don't have a picture of it, unfortunately, but Rick Clund. Rick Clund took the Bassmasters on Tolino, I think it was. Anyway, I'm open to correction. So uh, uh, Facebook and, and uh, social media was all a buzz over Rick Clan and whatnot, saying fish don't know how, know your age or something like that. But you'll notice something really interesting about Rick Clan. Guys, this looks terrible, eh? I've had this in that tray there since. This is a Bassmaster magazine of 2013 can you see that see that 2013 okay 2013 why have i kept this article i might have spoken about this before it's rick clans technology conundrum guys if you can ever get your hands on this article it's a great article it's in that it's in that magazine You'll have to go back and scratch in the attic or in the basement or wherever. But just to cap quickly what he says. He's very worried that the new age angler gets too caught up with technology. He says you must always rather trust your instinct in your gut feel and be aware of your senses and what have you. As much respect as I have for Rick Clun, I think that was a little bit of an irresponsible statement to make. And I'm going to tell you why. Please don't hold it against me. I've got huge respect for the man. If you are Rick Clun and you have a professional bass fishing career and knowledge like he has, you won't need technology either. You just need what's in here. Let me tell you, his instincts that he gets up with in the morning without having to hook up to a battery and hit the power button and whatnot. It's up here. It's in his head. He 
he has that much of incredible information about every body of water that he goes and fishes and unfortunately us mere mortals do not have that so use technology in your search to become the best angler that you can be but let's stick to what Rick Klein said to us too don't just make it about technology it's a package deal so okay that's my opening um, statements for the evening and what have you let me just read the feed here quickly see if I've missed anybody uh, Mark Jeez, there's a lot of guys uh, good evening everybody I'm not going to mention everybody but good evening good evening uh, oh, a lot of guys on there hi Jacques good evening how are you doing um, Jan Jansen van Vieren uh, will get me a lost scope chart and see what the fuss is about <laughs> yeah yeah Jan <laughs> uh, yeah okay there we go okay guys uh, I said we're going to talk about that and then we want to talk about uh, let me just make sure is the news feed and that that's all done yes 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 okay now let me shut that down we don't need that anymore so yeah, i just want to organize my desk here a little bit uh, the laptop we might still use we'll move that over there sorry this is how i get mi mixed up is when i don't follow this properly uh, hi good evening robbie thanks for, for for joining us nice um I am looking for some pictures okay yes let's get cracking guys I went and bought myself uh, to see what all this fuss is about as you guys know I've been having a lot of fun with the big uh, 16 inch unit and boy do you get spoiled with that thing that thing is an absolute dream let me tell you but we can't all have 16 inch live units so i thought let me go and get an affordable seven inch unit it's the new lawrence elite ti2 it's the seven inch unit let me see if you can see there all right there it is there and it came with the active imaging it's got the active image i don't know if you can see that down the bottom there active imaging three in one transducer and i thought let's see how that thing performs so we hit the water now this first picture that you see here okay i'm going to disappear now but i want you to see the full page uh maybe what i can do no no let's not get too creative here that's just going to go sideways or is this it there we go okay guys this is not my screenshot i got this from facebook um oh man the chap's name is just oh it's on the tip of my tongue i apologize the owner of this image i apologize um if i think of it just now i'll mention your your name I'm, I'm sorry but guys this is not my screenshot but i thought it's a really good screenshot in really optimum conditions really nice sonar water if we can call it sonar water where sonar is very comfortable and you get high quality sonar and i mean look at the range this is on 800 kilohertz yes there are those two ghost lines that you see going down the side on the left and the right hand side it's just like a Lawrence signature we had it with the LSS one I see it's back now with the three in one um, it's a little bit of a concern for me you you do learn to look past it but it would be nice to see those engineers just take those lobes and squash them together just a little bit to minimize those two dark lines I find uh, they're also there even on the um, uh, mega imaging on the mega plus imaging which we'll have a look at just now they are still there but they're much smaller obviously it's been squashed but uh, still guys I mean 140 feet that's really really good stuff okay this was me coming in off the plane on the boat first time the only thing I changed here guys was the palette this is 
out the box, connected, power on, hit the water. And I changed this, um, this palette to this new number 10. I really like it. It's got a really nice, sharp, crisp look to it. I think it's fantastic. Then we pulled in here. We had a look at these little rocks over here. Um, I just want to see if I've got this on here so you can see what we're looking at on the charts here. So you know exactly where we are. And I think this will be under mosaic. Can you put this on HDS? Back. Uh, chart options. Full. There we go. There we go. Uh, let me just change that over quickly. Sorry, guys. Merge that in there. Okay. There we go. Okay. Yeah, you see those rocks there? I've used this quite a bit in my um, demos and my Fish Tech Live shows. This is a nice area, uh, the way that I stitched this. This was actually not even uh, Ultra HF. This is just the old mosaic charts. But it's these rocks. Unfortunately, these rocks that you see over here are pretty much out of the, they're just about out the water. You can't get your boat in there. Our dams are very, very low and they're dropping, unfortunately, again. But you see there's a channel that runs in here. Now these rocks that you see there, these are the rocks. Let me see if I can pause that. Okay, these are the rocks as we're approaching those rocks. This is what it looks like on the finder. Came up there. Came up there. Here I was drifting really slow and I started to turn. As you can see, I started to turn to the right. But look at the fish reveal. Can you see the fish reveal on the right hand side? Right at the top of the page, top right hand side, you see that little blue section there. Um, I hope you guys can see that. Yeah. Um, look at the size of those fish that are sitting on top of those rocks. Now, there's carp around here in this area. I saw them. They were coming up to the surface. There were tilapia, bream. There was tilapia here. But there's also these rocks always hold these small fish. But I can tell you now, and you'll see why I say it just now. Those are bass. Those are big bass hunting those small bass because we are the small bass. They've gone. They are, they've taken off for their lives. Um, sorry, who was that? Yapi Buerza tuning in from the Northern Cape tonight. Hi, hi Yapi. Well, hey, welcome. What are you doing out there? Lucky man. You're lucky man. Um, guys, so yeah, um, I, I, I can't prove it, but just how weak that signal is, to me, I think it's, it's, pretty good chance that those were bass hunting on those small little 200 grammers that hang around these rocks a lot what's interesting here is while we're here have a look at the sonar you see i didn't change that uh, 200 kilohertz to 83 kilohertz and i didn't uh, change the palette from default 1 to default 13 which i really love to do it just makes those arches really pop um but look how easy you can spot those fish, but look how difficult it is to see it on the 200 kilos. Obviously, the 200 kilos has just got the small little cone, and those where's the where's the down scan has a 57 degree cone, and obviously I clipped the edge of those fish, and those fish were still hanging in the edge of one of those 57 in that 57 degree uh, beam rather. I, I don't know if it's left to right. No, it was on the right. You can see it on the. A uh, side scan on the right hand side up near the top there on the right you see a faint little showing to the right so that was obviously him there okay next picture and everything's gone all the little fish are gone and everything uh, they're running for their lives but look how clear <clears throat> look how clear these these rocks are very very clear let me tell you that the, the definition Look, I could extend this range out a lot more, but I wanted to I wanted to keep it a like for like. Here, guys, typical example. Okay, who can tell me? Who can tell me what fish that is? That is that is just such a typical, typical signature of a carp. That is carp. You, you should never even 
when you look at that, there should be no doubt. That is a carp 100%. You can see how he released some air there. You can see it on, on the 2D sonar. You can see how he uh, gassed himself there. Um, he passed wind, as it were. <clears throat> and you can just see that. And then, of course, on the down scan, if you look at him, he's got that bright dot at the top, which is obviously that very, very heavy skeleton that he's got. He's got like a fiberglass type skeleton. So yeah, that's all Mr. Cop. And on the side scan, this is there's nothing here. Obviously, it's just sand. And there you can see those two uh, ghost lines that we talk about. Uh, Doug Sanders, awesome. Yeah, save your money. It's worth it. It's worth it. But let me tell you, the little Elite Ti2 is very affordable. Eh? Very affordable. Great little unit. I'm I'm very very impressed. Okay, now. Again, the side scan looks fantastic. It looks clear, it's sharp. One of the biggest things is the 3D somehow compresses that side scan. It squashes it together so we lose horizontal resolution. Not with the active imaging 3-in-1. You get an incredible resolution in that side scan. Things look, it's pretty much a one, you know, if you're on a dead idle on your craft, just in gear, uh, because we don't have control over the uh, scroll speed of the side scan but you're going to get a like a one-to-one -one sort of resolution if there's a tire down there it will look round it won't be that oval egg shape deal uh, fish wise let's look at what's happening on the fish reveal with the um, 2d sonar again why okay this is stock standard default i know the answer to this and i'm going to give it to you now but why are there not fish archers on the fish reveal? Because fish reveal is on, I can assure you. But guys, I'll and look in, in, in the 200 kilohertz, there's the fish as clear as day. That is not uh, bass, but it's not carp either. That is tilapia. You see that short oval sort of shape? That is tilapia slash bream type of fish very clear in the, in the 200 kilohertz uh, not so clear in the down scan in the fish fish reveal why didn't we see an arch on that fish guys i don't know why it doesn't show up that well under palette one under fish reveal options but please do yourself a favor please change under fish reveal options change the palette from 1 to 13 you will see a massive difference in what you can expect to see um, on the down scan guys i'm gonna ask just your permission for one second hello reynard Please won't you go and have a look at Fish Tech Live on Facebook. I'll answer your messages later. Thank you. Yeah, I'm telling you. <laughs> Dear Lord. Okay, again. Brilliant, brilliant side side scan. I just love this this palette. The contrast is just absolutely first class. This let me just go back to this again you see i'm still on those little rocks there but you know i want to see if i can see yes you can actually see it can you see that little stick there guys when the dam is full because it's too shallow now and there's a lot of these small fish around here but when the dam is at 100 percent i can't tell you what a good spot this is and where you know they always talk about a spot on a spot that little stick there that you that i'm on now that is known as a spot on a spot and let me tell you it is a serious spot or spot you can see it on on the side scan there on the right hand side you'll see that stick sticking up there a little bit that is a key key spot so when you find rocks like that and you see something like that that is what you must target and this is why i can't wait for the live view to come out because once you identify that okay the charts are easy if you've got a fish tech chart boom there it is you're going to see it as clear as that but 
But even with the charts, you want to then go up to that tree and scan it with your live view and see what's hanging around that tree. That is good. I, I, I can't wait for that. It's very, very exciting stuff. Guys, let's look at the sonar here once again. The 200 kilohertz not doing too much for us. The interpretation there is not great. Without the down scan at the top, you would not know what is going on there. And I can tell you what is going on there. When I eventually came, even on the side scan, can you see those two dots on the right hand side near, near the top? Those are bass. And what they're doing is, they are chasing those poor small little fish, trying to get a little snack. So the fishing gurus, how would you target that when you've got feeding fish, feeding on fish 200 grams size? Possibly a big swim bait, a big crankbait, but a shallow diving. I mean, look at the depth. You're only in 10 feet of feet. In, in 10 feet of depth, you with, with, with a crank with a big crankbait that drives 10 feet. I don't know of one, but you will bounce off that rock for example you know or a big swim bait i don't know ask the pros they'll they'll tell you put a big swim bait down there and who knows you bring it through there and yeah lovely looking fish i get excited when i see them looking like that okay then i left this this area um and i moved along to a new area that i've um let me just change this where am i now yes okay then we sort of moved around oh, you don't know where i am now we sort of moved around this area here this area is on my new 2019 update it is not released yet <laughs> hello raynaud hello ash my brains didn't realize it's tuesday <laughs> no problem raynaud welcome um yeah so this sort of area here is is new on 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 the charts and you can see there, there's there's quite a few trees around here um, i think this one that we're looking at that we went past here was one of these here um it was one of these here if let me just put that back again there we go um and i was really hoping these because it was at a good depth it was at that 20 foot depth we know at inanda this is at in Inanda Dam. We know those fish like to sit around that 20 foot depth at the moment. So yeah, I really thought I'd go in here, go to these trees and the fish will just be stacked up in there. But it wasn't to be. So let's go to the next one. Again, trees. Now look at the fish reveal. Can you see that, that there? I am... I'm a 50-50. If I look at the 200 kilohertz sonar at the bottom and I look at the fish reveal at the top, I'm at 50-50. Could those two lines be, be fish? It, it's not convincing enough for me to put a bait on them. Maybe other guys would. Um, no. Definitely not. It's not. That does not excite me. I want to be 100% sure. Then we started following this little road there's a little road here uh, where is this road yeah there it is there let me merge that in there's a road here i'll merge that in that's the old um i think on the sediment you can also see it on the sediment there's a road run yeah there's the road can you see on on the sediment there's the road running there so yeah um and there it is there on our mosaic and boom um that was my first fish in in this area and i just had a little um mojo on a short mojo with a little missile um it was like a little swim bait oh, my apologies brian the pan um <laughs> i'll i'll pay more attention to the names of these baits i must actually bring them with me and so i can show you but uh geez i love that little missile swim bait it's a little three and a half inch when it's fishing tough like this oh, uh, it's just one of those things you're going to get bites sure you're going to get some smaller fish but at least you're going to get bites and it's great great fun so um, that's what it looked like there i spotted it immediately gave me a nice little bit of a fight there that was that was fun then <clears throat> then it went quiet again for a while um 
Then I came into this area. This was my first pass into this area here. I don't know if you can see this, but on the left hand side of the side scan here, uh, you can see there's a bit of a lay down. It's quite a big lay down. And then there's a little rock pile there. And look at the sonar. Immediately, the fish are there. The fish are there. I increased the range a little bit to 60 feet here. And then I hung around this, this area. And then the carp came past. Can you see the carp? Clear, clear as day. Those are carp. <clears throat> and then then it was fun then there was a lot it was every drop fish 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 the biggest was only about a kilo two pound fish somewhere around there but the that what you're seeing there is this spot here uh, merge that in there it's an old foundation it's an old foundation. I have driven over this area. This area here is where I've caught my PB. My biggest bass ever is in this area. Not on this foundation, a little bit further out where those trees are. But I wasn't aware of the spot. Not at all. And I never bothered to target it. When I was putting the map together, I said to myself, wow, that looks interesting. I've definitely got to go and have a look at that once the maps are all put together. If you go down a little bit, there's that, that lay down. You see that lay down there? So there's that. And then, of course, there's the main house frame. You can see it's rectangular. And I don't know what all that rubble is all about. I don't know what they built inside there. I don't know if it was a fireplace or something. It could be a fireplace. That's what it probably is. It's probably a fireplace. But if you look at the, um, the, the side scan shot of that, when I went over it, can you see it there to the left-hand side? There's a little bit of that sort of rubble there. But, geez, these fish were busy here. Very, very busy. And I caught a lot of fish there. This here is that lay down with those little trees next to it. <clears throat> and there's something square there. I'm not too sure what that is. Uh, I don't know if he had a little bry out there by his hut. Uh, I, I can't say for sure, but that is looking at this area here. Um, there's that, that lay down, and there's those other little trees that, that we were talking about. And let me go back into there. And there it is there. Okay. Uh, that's basically what the uh, down scan imaging of that area looked like. While we're looking at this down scan fish reveal, sorry, have I missed anybody here? Okay, no. Um, <clears throat> guys, in there, as disappointing as it is, there were no fish. So close. I mean, right next to the building where all those fish were. I thought, oh, those bigger fish are probably hiding in that lay down or whatnot. It just didn't turn out to be like that. I really tried. But while we're here, let's see if we can learn something here. By the way, look at the water temperature. <clears throat> Very warm. Yeah, guys, it's summer here. It's hot. If you look at all those arches that you see there, guys, not one of those arches there is a fish. Be careful of fish reveal around timber. An echo will ping off a branch, either the end of a branch or where a branch forks. When that sound wave hits the middle of that fork, it's going to give a return, which is going to be an echo, which is going to be an arch, which is going to give the appearance of a fish. So be very, very careful of fish reveal in timber. When you see the timbers over here and you can see where all the branches go, but below those branches, there's the fish sitting clear as day. It'll show on the 2D, it'll show on the fish reveal. Then you won't have that doubt in your mind as to what you're targeting you'll know exactly what you're targeting so just be careful just because you see an arch and fish reveal it does not mean that it's a fish it could just be an echo from a branch right who have we got joining us Stephen 
Lately, Hume. Good evening, Stephen. How are you doing? Thanks for, for joining us. And uh, uh, Steve Barnett, welcome. Welcome, Steve. Um, Reynard says he can't see the location of the spot. Um, you see, it's there somewhere. <laughs> yeah, but uh, guys, believe me, the, the 2019 um, uh, Ultra HF uh, mosaic is really going to be a big uh, boost to the current Inanda chart. I know there were lots of areas of the Inanda chart that that you guys were not very happy with. Uh, it was early days when I created that. I was still using the Garmin back then and we all know how terrible that was. And yeah, I just, I know it's, I apologize that it's taken me so long, but now it's really, there's some fantastic stuff on there. You guys are absolutely going to love it. Right, what have we got next? Um, yes, while we're here. Okay, now now you've seen, let's just, let's just do a recap here quickly. Bang, 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 bang. I want to take you back to the shot. That's the one I want to show you. Okay, this is the shot I used earlier in the week, but you can see how to chop it a little bit and flip it uh, that it uh, matched the uh, hummingbird screenshot because I came in. I couldn't remember which direction I'd come in because I did it on two different days. I should have had both with me and tested both at the same time, but I was on a different boat when I tested the uh, the hummingbird. I put it on my, on my, on my mapping boat because I want to use that for my uh, new Ultra HF Plus m mosaics. But um, this was the shot here. Now, what I want to show you, just remember that now, now you've got to take a mental sort of grab of what you're seeing there. And now we're going to flick over to that. This is the new Helix 8 Gen 3, and it's the Mega SI Plus version. I think it's the first one in the country, or at least one of the first ones in, in the country. And I'm going to show you the worst first. And guys, the hummingbird guys that are watching, please. I'm not trying to make things look to... This is out the box, go on the water. I've, I've already taken a lot of flack and there's some very, very un angry guys out there saying, I don't know what I'm doing. And I should have changed it from 1150 to 1148.2. And it's like... You okay then? I don't know if there's any fishermen I know that want to. I don't know. We'll talk about that. But this was in the deeper water. This mega, you can see the frequency there goes up to 1150 megahertz. Guys, it's not designed for deep water, it's a shallow water tool. So just don't expect it to do something that it's not designed to do. Now, this is on those same rocks again. This is, you remember the, the chart that I showed earlier? This is on exact, there's that, if, if you look at the side scan on the left hand side, there's that little stump that I said that is so, so cool. I want to tell you something about what does happen here. The, the unit stuck out of the box when you power up and you go out the side scan the side imaging the mega imaging the unit itself seems to like have i haven't turned sharpen on no it's got a sharpen feature it's off but the unit is sharpening it slightly and that's why it looks slightly pixelated it gives the appearance that it's you know that it's a lot clearer but it's just the pixels that have been digitally sharpened somewhat the raw data, however, that I've put into the software looks very, very similar. Very similar. Um, you know, it's, it, it, there's no... Yeah, anyway. Next shot. But what's interesting here, can you see the small fish on the down imaging at the top there, top left-hand side? There's that shoal of those small little fish. Shame there's not many of them left. I think those big fish have been gorging on them. But, um, yeah, and the sonar... I. I I can't fault it. it seemed to work fine um, 
went over the rocks again from a slightly different angle. It's clear. It's clear. Um, the ghost lines, can you see those, those ghost lines there? They've also got the ghost lines. There's a lot of hummingbird guys that'll tell you we don't have ghost lines. Hi corner, Baba. You've got ghost lines. Go and look at your screen. They're not as prominent as the Lawrence, sure. But you've got ghost lines. In fact, you've got two ghost lines. We've only got one ghost line. So, you know, it's a little bit of a trade-off here. There's another angle of it. Same little rock pile. Okay. Now we moved. But wait, before I go on to this, I just want to go back to this. Guys, let me tell you. I, I look at a lot of side scan. I, mapping is one of my businesses that I do. I look at a lot of side scan. This side scan is great. That is some really nice, you can see I changed the frequency there. I just noticed that now. See I changed that to 850, 850, 850. Oh. Wonder why that happened. Guys, that's very, very interesting. My side imaging here is on 850 kilohertz, but the down is on mega. Why did it do that? I must find out if it's got some kind of a auto. Jeez, I'll look into that. Maybe I'm not doing a proper. Well, this will be a real apples with apples test because this is 800 and you know 790 to 850 kilohertz. They they say it's chirp uh, compared to. 800 kilohertz of the Lawrence, but can you see how the Lawrence one looks like it's slightly blurry and then if I merge again that looks sharper It's digitally sharpened So anyway, uh, okay, geez, I just saw that now um, Anyway, I'm glad that we did see that because somebody would have picked it up and pointed it out to me um, Okay, then but but the important thing I want to say guys, it, it's great Bang, that is great. That is great. You can't fault it. The active imaging does a great job. The mega does a great job. Can't fault it. Can't fault it. Um, was I expecting to see more from the mega imaging? Yes, I was. Guys, if you look at those marketing screenshots of the uh, mega imaging, especially the mega plus, it's it's like something I have never seen with my eyes in my life. They are phenomenal. But always keep in mind, those are probably done in absolutely pristine sonar waters. The water that I was in here, it was hot. It's full of algae. It's, it's not the cleanest water you've ever, it's, it's quite poor quality water. So, yes. When we go into winter and this algae buggers off and our water clears up and cleans up, or I go to, I'm going to Vitbank uh, soon. Uh, apparently, that's got clean water. I can't wait to see how it looks on on there. And yes, you're going to get better sonar, definitely better sonar. But I wanted to also then go to this brush pile. This little brush pile is near Bay Two. It normally holds a number of fish, and I wanted to see how the mega plus down imaging works and as you can see this first pass here I didn't hit it quite right my waypoint was slightly off it was a little bit to the right and then I got basically right on top of it yes you can see the branches and everything but look at the amount of sediment silt green algae whatever you want to call it in that down imaging shot it's just really really messy and unfortunately, I don't know why I didn't take a picture with the active imaging, but it was very, very similar. It was a very similar thing. So, yeah. Um, then I tested the sonar with the uh, uh, table tennis ball test. I popped that in the water and, you know, you go out to 30 feet and you drop it in there. And I drove over it. I could see them. Remember, the water quality is very poor. Plus, it made it quite difficult because, as you can see, the thermocline has moved down to that sort of 24, 25 foot mark. And that's exactly where those uh, ping pong balls were, were sitting. So the unit is desperately trying to clean up the screen 
but it's going to clean up some of the echo from those balls because they're just sitting at the at the wrong spot if you know what i mean then i tried that switch fire view for a little bit in those water conditions you cannot use the switch fire feature that is for sure so yeah guys that's the um that was the sort of can we call it shootout between the active imaging and the mega plus um i i hope i don't get too much flack for not showing the best pictures the world has ever seen but guys that is what you or any normal person can expect to see out the box in these poor water conditions that we have now and i think it's great i think it's fantastic it can only get better it can only the only way to get worse than this is to go on the vol river right now with all that sewage and plus all that rain they've had and oh those waters are just absolutely terrible right that was that uh how are we doing time wise 19 ay, ay, ay. 10 minutes left i'm gonna have to move i don't know if i'm gonna have time for this now guys um this is a new little product it is the let me go how am i gonna do this let me show you on hds there we go let's go there let's go merge yeah there we go or should i just go like that no you're not going to see no that no that'll work fine okay this is the little lawrence remote controller it's the lr1 the remote controller comes in a little box it comes with some little straps i think one is a wrist top vibe or i don't know bicep top vibe not for me and then the neck type system is for me but and the clip and it comes with a little latch like this and where's the other part there's a little clip that clips in here but i i'll be honest with you i don't know how this clip part goes onto the actual remote um just hang on a sec right i'm back i thought it would be velcro or something this is the remote here that's what the remote looks like cute as a button but i know this this clips on here and this is meant to jiggy around your neck this that part i get but baba how does that get attached to there i might be very standard grade bloody mental capacity here right now and you guys are probably going laughing your heads off at me but i can't work out how you get that it's not velcro you can't open it around there so i look forward to hearing from somebody how stupid i am and i can't work that out but anyway i went to plan b i used the motor guard not a big fan of it as you guys know they must sort their nonsense out with this thing but there's the motor guide remote and what i did was pop i just popped the little remote on the back now i want to show you what is so cool about this thing i've already paired it and it's quite easy just go into your um settings can you guys see what i'm doing there uh you go into your wireless and you go to your bluetooth options and it will give you a list of paired uh, devices if it's not paired yet it will ask you and you just follow the instructions there's a video by jacob scott on on how to do that i'm not we don't have the time we've got seven minutes but it will link and you're all good to go so what can you do with it you can push any one of the buttons as you'll see the waypoint that you don't want to change because the minute you see something or you get a fish or whatever bang you want to create a waypoint hit your spot lock on your uh xr5 stay on the spot you've got a waypoint for it now you're good to go if if you want to see what was there on your screen you can zoom in and out it's obviously got a why is that not zooming in and out now let me just see huh now it's not 
Let me see if I can. You won't believe it. I actually did this just now before the show and it worked like a, like a charm. It says that that's... Oh, sorry. My apologies. I'm being the dwarf one. Now it has connected. What if I'm connected? And you'll note, let me just see what happens if I zoom. Ah, there we are. Now we're talking. Now we're talking. On the fireplace. Zoom in. And it's got a great range. I've got a 21 foot boat from right from the back of the boat to the front of the boat. Works like a charm. So it's really nice and strong. But here's the cool part. It's got customizable buttons and they got long short press and long press. You can custom select whatever you want. Let me tell you. For me, screen recording is important. I mean, screen capturing. So if I want to record the, the screen, obviously long press. It's not going to give you option for short press because that will be kept for waypoints only. But you go down there and you go capture screenshot. In Allah. And I'm going to hit save. Now look what happens. I push and hold that down. And you should get at the bottom of the screen a thing that says, there we go, captured screenshot. Can you see that? Right. It's as easy as that. Now you've got your screenshot. You're good to go. But let's look at the others. Like I said, you've got short press, you've got long press on these two buttons at, at the top. Uh, plus and minus are not customizable. But guys, there's a host of things on there. There's waypoints, toggle, there's controls, pause, sonar is a nice one. System standby is a nice one. If your power pole control is there, if, you're, if you've got your radio on, uh, your, your, your sonic hub, you can turn it off or whatever. Volume up, volume down. Uh, trolling, engage, anchor, etc. Okay, that we're not going to do because we've got that on the other side. So we won't waste that. Now, the favorites are awesome. I really like the favorites because you can customize a page, go to favorite and select which one of you, you. But, you know, you get that long list of how many you've got down the side there, how many custom pages or layouts. That you, and you can customize it perfectly. Do the side scan, the down scan and just proportion it perfect. It really is fantastic. Uh, let me just see. Brendan Van Zadam. Good evening, Brendan. How are you doing? John uh, Crystal Detzel. Hi from USA. Welcome, John. Uh, thanks for doing these videos. Uh, very no Thank you very much. I'm just winging it. I must be honest. Uh, <laughs> I learn with you guys. And when you guys give me a hard time, then I learn even more. So welcome. Uh, Jim Sheehan, everybody. Fantastic. Okay. So that was it. So you can make these custom things. Now. Try and work out. Here's the big reason why you're going to use this. Yes, you can do it on the screen and all that's hunky dory, 100%. But let me tell you something. What is the first thing that goes on a unit? You go and buy a big HDS 16 or 12 or whatever. The first thing that that is at high risk on these units are the keys. And why are they the keys? Because you've got a typical situation like, you know, when you hit power, you mean to just tap the power like that and you take your finger and now you tap on power off. We're obviously not going to do that because I'm going to wait for it to restart. We're not going to do that. Okay. It's a soft, gentle push. Guys, I've been on a boat where I've seen an oak. He pushes that power button and I can see his knuckles going white as he squashes waiting for it to pause thinking that if he pushes it harder it will shut down faster no do not do that push the buttons gently your pages button unfortunately i was really hoping there was a sh i could select pages as one of the uh, shortcuts here because it's a button i use a lot and unfortunately not now why do you want to do that if you're using this a lot, this is a lot cheaper to replace than a whole unit, let me tell you. And if you're out of warranty and your panel key goes, there's no replacing those parts. There's no replacing them. 
They are gone. You're buying a new unit. Rather, after five, six years or whatever, go and replace this. Push the heck out of these buttons and rather replace this than end up with a unit with button, with faulty buttons out of warranty. Promise you guys, listen to what I'm telling you. I've seen some very, very sad people just out of warranty and the buttons go. It's Man, it's sad. This little device is going to help you. And I tell you what, the way I set mine up, I wish I saved it and I could show you how I did, but I spent some time with doing the whole setup. But let me tell you, it was just so awesome. Pop the unit into standby, take a screenshot, drop a waypoint, zoom into the charts, zoom out, put a multi-panel uh, chart view, chart with sonar. Awesome, awesome device. You guys will absolutely love it. Um, great little uh, 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 gadget. It's a little bit costly as far as I'm concerned, as far as a remote goes, a little bit expensive. Um, but, hey guys, what is it? So, that is it. Uh, I think I've shown you everything I was doing time-wise. Bang! Eight o'clock, on the nose. Jeez, and yeah, I thought I was going to have a half an hour show. Um, uh, let me just pop this up here quickly. Uh, pop that there, pop that there. Uh, merge that into there. Boom! Right, guys, everybody that joined me tonight, um, I hope you enjoyed the show. I hope you learned something. I hope it was informative. Please, um, when I submit the video, you'll see tomorrow, I will upload this onto YouTube. So it'll be the full HD video available. Uh, unfortunately, on uh, Facebook, it is only 720p. Um, but on YouTube it will be full 1080 so you can see all the little nitty gritty bits of, of, of detail and please guys subscribe to the channel like and share and uh, that just helps me a hell of a lot just to see those numbers growing and they are growing beautifully and again for Fish Tech uh, uh, Lawrence page I just want to say to all you guys thank you thank you very much we reached 10,000 uh, can I, okay, it's not a group, so it's not members, but it's 10,000 followers, whatever, like active people, which is a great achievement as far as I'm concerned. So to all of you, thank you very, very much. Um, for the guys that have got an invested interest in the World Games, um, I can't find the results for all the different disciplines on Facebook. It seems to be... There were some photographs on a window somewhere. I, I, I don't know. The best guys have just got that side of the thing sorted out with waymasters.net, where it's a live updating system. It's a really professional system. So those of you who want to follow the tournament, particularly the best guys, waymasters.net, go and have a look at that. And um, yeah, guys, thank you very much for joining me. Uh, uh, next month, Hopefully, I've got two new charts to, to talk about, two new dams up in the northern provinces of South Africa. And uh, maybe we can talk about it then and what else has happened. And of course, we can conclude. Uh, it might be a bit too late, might be too old news. But uh, maybe we can have just a quick little discussion about the World Games as to who the winners were. Uh, maybe just give that five minutes. So thanks again, everybody. Uh, Reynard, oh, he's got load shedding. Yeah, load shedding. Viva, viva Africa. Um, Rimvadas Baraka, greetings from Lithuania. Welcome. Sorry, I just caught you at the end there. Uh, Roke Roy Lavars, uh, thanks from Finland. Welcome. And good evening, everybody. Thanks very much for joining me. See you next month, first, uh, second Tuesday of the month in March.